I remember posting this beach picture. I was in the fetal position in my bed. And just like everything else I posted that month, it had been taken before the IUD was placed. And this space gala picture, I feel like you really can't tell, but that was probably the lowest point. Right after the lowest point in all of this, I had not eaten for like three days before I got on that plane to Florida. The only reason I got out of bed was because I had this obligation. And that's why I'm making this video is I feel like in the last couple of months, the stuff that you've been seeing online from me and my actual life are drifting further and further apart to the point where I'm like viscerally uncomfortable posting videos anymore. And that's the thing, who I am on YouTube has always been who I am in real life. I've even had people at conferences be like, oh wow, you are this happy and bubbly and excited here too. Um, but in the last nine months, that's not who I am. And that dissonance is why I need to post this video. But I haven't known how to talk about this publicly because birth control feels really private and also very off topic for this channel. And I am a woman who does not want to add to any kind of anti-birth control discourse. Like birth control is essential and all uterus owners should have access. And I know so many people who have had incredible and sometimes even life-saving experiences with birth control. I am just not one of them. For those of you who don't know, hormonal IUDs are one of the most common forms of birth control. It's like a little stick of hormones that gets placed into your uterus. The one I have lasts for five years and I have now learned that over the course of those five years, it goes from releasing 17.5 micrograms of this artificial hormone called lorangesterol to 7.4 micrograms per day, which means that when you get it replaced, it's more than doubling the amount of synthetic hormones being like blasted into your body every day. And it turns out there are a lot of people who are super, super sensitive to this to the point where it can triple your risk of suicide, except that there's basically no data on it, which seems insane to me because like millions of people have these installed inside of their uteruses. I've done a lot of research for myself and I have a lot of opinions on this, but the reality is I am really not qualified to be educating like thousands of people on the anthropological or political climate or like issues in research on birth control. So if you're interested, I will link that down below. So last June I reached the five year mark on my IUD and I had to get it replaced and like I, kid you not it was like somebody switched a flip inside of me i left the hospital a completely different person i do not know how to explain to you like how happy and emotionally stable i was i had this like the best job ever i had amazing friends like my dream workshop i was like genuinely the happiest i think i have ever been and then the next day like i had the iud replaced and i was immediately suicidal it felt like I was thrown into this hormonal washing machine where suddenly I had no control over my thoughts or my feelings. And when I talked to my gynecologist about it, she was basically like, yeah, IUDs are the best option you have. And it's really unlikely that they're affecting your mood. And that's part of what terrifies me so much about making this video is that you basically have to take my word for it that there was no amount of strength or willpower that could have changed that. Like I have both of those things in spades. And if my own gynecologist questioned my experience, I'm not sure how to expect a bunch of like mostly male strangers on the internet to believe me. And that's part of the problem. We have spent so many years being conditioned to just suck things up and that our sexual health isn't important and that being in like physical and emotional pain is just a non-negotiable part of being a woman. There were days where I was in so much emotional pain that I was like too nauseous to function. And there were days where I would use all of my energy to will myself out of bed and make it a couple steps and then just collapse on my bedroom floor, like shaking and crying for hours. A few times I went several days without eating or drinking and friends had to come over and like pull me out of it. Pretty much the only thing I could think about was how I didn't want to live and like what my options were in that regard. And like not super comfortable talking more about that. And after a couple months, I started feeling like ever so slightly better and I turned to making like kind of risky 
adrenaline fueled decisions as a coping mechanism, which is why if you follow me on social media, I went on all those like wild adventures last fall. So luckily my primary care doctor did take me really seriously and she offered to pull it immediately, except that she was worried about the side effects of the sudden hormone loss. So we referred to a psychiatrist and basically, yeah, I'm like part of this really unlucky two-ish percent of people that have extreme sensitivity to hormones and there's no answer. I could pull it out and maybe my body would like go back to normal relatively quickly. She had seen that or it could trigger a like multi-year basically postpartum depression that was really hard to dig yourself out of and she had seen that too. And so eventually we decided to leave it because the only data that we had to go on was like how my own body reacted last time, which is that eventually I stabilized. We didn't really know how long it would take, but we knew it happened and like the last couple years that I had it were some of the happiest years of my life. Also, I had to refuse any kind of diagnosis or medication because I refused to put my pilot's license or my flight medical at risk. Like flying is one of the most important things in the world to me and one of the ways I escaped and got through some of those really rough patches. And the FAA has some incredibly antiquated views on mental health. And uh, that's why alcoholism is so prevalent in pilots, but we're not gonna talk about that today. The part that makes me the most upset about all of this is not that it happened now. I mean, that sucks. But the part that makes me the most upset is that this is the second time this has happened to me. Like six years ago, I was a VC backed tech founder that had left school and was like chasing my crazy startup dream. And then I got an IUD and I did not get out of bed for three months. Eventually I shut my company down and I went back to school and I gave a TED talk a, a bunch of years ago about suicide and entrepreneurship. Um, so I'm not going to rehash it here, but like this past year has given me so much clarity and perspective on that time in my life. And I'm realizing that I like threw my whole first career away. And this whole time I've thought it was because I wasn't good enough or I wasn't strong enough. I didn't have it in me. And now I know it's just this like stupid stick of hormones that was fucking me up so bad. And that's why I feel like I have to make this video because this cycle is happening again and I feel like I'm throwing away this career too, and I don't want that. Like, this is my dream. I love making things for you guys. I love having you guys along on this journey, and I so desperately don't want that to go away. I have a lot of guilt about not doing enough or making enough in the last year for you guys, and especially for my patrons. But honestly, like, it took all of my emotional energy to live and also to maintain my relationships with my family and with my friends. And so I got really terrible at communication on social media and to my patrons. So I'm coming up on nine months of this now and I am a lot better, but I am not all the way better. I have weeks of being my old self again and then I also have some really bad weeks. And I think that's something I just have to learn how to live with until I stabilize. But this video isn't one of those videos that's like, I'm burned out and I have to stop making videos. It's the opposite. It's that, it's like me telling you that things have been really, really hard and I've been struggling to fake it, but now I don't feel like I have to. And so I am about to release a bunch of videos and I would love your support and excitement around them. Also going through this can be a humbling reminder of how incredible your community is. And I am so, so unbelievably grateful to my friends, like the ones who stayed on the phone with me for like five or six hours a day when it was really, really bad, to the ones who would show up at my house and make sure that I ate something or that I saw a person and had human interaction, or the ones that enabled me to climb big mountains because they knew that's what made me feel better. And then to all of you for not giving up on me, even while I've been sporadic and like 
I have definitely seen your comments that are like, you don't look super okay. And you were right. Um, but thank you for sticking with me anyway. And then the world's biggest thank you to my patrons. My Patreon is what kept me financially afloat for a lot of that time when I like couldn't function and I couldn't make videos. A really fun thing that happened is that I turned 26 in the middle of this and so I aged out of insurance and went on state insurance and then nothing was covered. So then I racked up like thousands of dollars in medical debt and um, yeah, like I cannot express to you how much my Patreon saved me. So thank you. I don't really know how to say a bigger thank you, but if I could, I would. Maybe I'll like make all my patrons something. So yeah, that's what's been going on. The next videos will be a lot more Xyla-ish. I've done some really cool stuff. I'm in the middle of building a sailboat right now, um, which feel free to follow on social media. That'll probably come out in May. And um, yeah, I can't wait to see you in the next videos. And I don't know how to end this now. So cool, bye. <laughs>